think it's just kind of happening. I don't know that we're necessarily game planning for that, but um, Coach Wilson will tell you, and again, maybe he said this, but you know, we have to call plays based on whoever's in the game, regardless of who they are, regardless of whether they're a vertical threat or they're a blocking guy. If we think there's a play there, we're going to call it, and uh, we expect our guys to make the plays when called upon. And so far this year, they've done a great job of doing that. Yeah, I think it helps a lot, not only for the receivers on the outside, I just think it helps with balance that, um, you know, I don't know that a defense can just load up and stop, uh, maybe runs to the right or runs to the left, that even though our, our, our tight ends are out there on the field, we have a chance to stretch the field vertically. I think that helps a lot just with your balanced overall attack. You guys had a 97 to 99 yard drive. You, you, you killed off the last six minutes of the game, basically, with a drive. Coach Wilson talked about NFL coach you mentioned to him the toughest offenses to prepare for are ones that could play at different gears. Sure. Do you think this team's getting better at doing that? Yeah, I do. I think that's always been in our package, the ability to, to go fast when you want to and the ability to make it look like you're going fast but pull off. Um, sometimes what's hard on the kids, though, is they're, they're so used to going fast all the time that when you do tell them to slow down, it's almost like we almost put our gloves down and, and we kind of back down ourselves. So to be able to slow the game down, and still come out and attack and, and, and be physical with that physical run game presence to us was very encouraging. Uh, we felt like the week before, we had two different chances that we could have put that game away and we didn't do it. So in this game, to be able to knock off the last six minutes of the game to us was very encouraging. You have a senior quarterback. Nate said he's got, you know, he likes elements of, of either approach, either hurry up or not. He said, you know, obviously, if you hurry up, the defense might not be able to align mm -hmm. properly and you can come at them. Yep. He said, but then again, as a quarterback, it gives me less time to read the defense. No doubt. How do you work with him on that? Well, there's a balance. And, and, and again, it's not easy. But what you try to do is, is, I was taught a long time ago, you try to direct the quarterback's eyes. And so even though there's a lot going on and it's chaotic and we're going fast, once you catch the snap, we're trying to maybe zero in on not necessarily the whole field to read, but maybe we're just keying half the field here. Um, just to try to keep it a little bit more simple for him so that he doesn't feel like he's trying to see all other 21 bodies at one time. That's a lot to ask when you're going fast. What does this mean from uh, Wake Forest defense what they expect? They're the number seventh ranked defense on third down. And so, you know, it, we need to avoid that situation. Um, they're doing a tremendous job of, of, uh, of creating havoc and just confusion on third down, dialing up some of their blitzes. Uh, so we need to avoid that at all costs. But they are a very disciplined bunch. Uh, they do a great job with their eyes. They're very well coached. Uh, they're going to stop the run. And uh, for us, we've seen a, a group of linebackers that are very active, um, again, that work hard to stop the run. So for us, it's going to be a great challenge, a great test, but, um, but we're excited about it. Well, one, he's a great coach, and, and he knows what he's doing. I think, you know, you look at Coach McCullough's history of, of being a great player at Miami, playing in the NFL, um, and then now really just getting his coaching career going really with us from, from five years ago. Uh, he does a tremendous job of relating with his players. He builds phenomenal relationships, and he has a very high standard for what it looks like uh, to be a running back that's going to play for him and, and it's going to play in our offense. Um, but again, to me, that, that shows a great teacher. That shows a great recruiter. That shows great relationship building. He's done all of those things at a very high level. And our running game has been solid really since year one here. And he's a big part of that. You know, I, I don't know that it's hard to forget that. I, you know, coaching a lot of times, um, if you're a good person and you were a good player and, and, and you were taught well yourself, a lot of times you can become good coaches if you can communicate. And, and I think Coach McCullough, again, does a phenomenal job of building relationships and getting his guys to buy in and trust what he's selling. Um, so many things go into it, but I, he, he's one of the best in the country. The ball is really getting spread out a lot. Is, are the play calls designed that way, or is it just happening, and how important is that against Wake Forest? It's just happening that way. I, I don't know that any play call is designed. And it really has been that way. Cody Latimer, Shane Wynn, Kofi Hughes, it's kind of just that way, where you try to play fast, you try to spread the field, the ball's going to go where it's supposed to go, regardless of who's standing out there. Um, but once again, I go back to the word of, of, of being balanced, that I, if you can't just key in on one receiver, that as a defense you'd like to think they have to guard the left side just as, as strongly as they do the right side. And I think that's to our advantage when that happens. Um, 
Coleman and Howard, I think they're both obviously phenomenal players in their own right. Um, Jordan has the, the ability to uh, read the zone schemes very well and, and lets things develop. Um, and once he sees a crease, he's able to put his foot in the ground and accelerate. Um, he's maybe a little bit more of a forward downhill runner maybe than Tevin was, uh, where Tevin's maybe a little more of a slasher and, and maybe a quick burst guy. Um, I really think in my heart, if you were to get those two on a 40-yard dash, it'd be dead even. I think Jordan's just as fast. I think maybe Tevin just appeared to be quicker. But again, Jordan has that, just the vision that just makes him so special. And he's able, again, like all great running backs do, to fall forward. You know, he's running with a great physical presence right now. No, I think so. Again, I credit it to the fact that he falls forward. He's a bigger back. He's 215, 220 pounds. He's a strong kid, knows how to run with forward body lean behind his shoulder pads. Um, you know, those are some things that coaches can't coach. Um, we can point him to the right and point him to the left, but once you hand that guy the ball, man, he sees things and he's able to, to hit it with some forward body lean that right now is making him a, a tough guy to bring down. Yards after catch you're getting from some of your receivers and the two touchdown plays last week and stuff. I mean, is that contagious among guys when, when guys are in that room or doing that? It is, and it sounds funny to say that it's contagious, but I think when kids see that on film, and really it started with Ricky Jones on week one where he would catch a couple passes and he was catching and going north quicker than, than, than most guys would, if that makes sense. So when I'm able to point that out on film, other guys see that and they understand, man, I don't just have to catch this ball and fall down. I'm allowed to stay on my feet and go run and, and go score touchdowns. I think it's very contagious. I think kids obviously want to make big plays. Um, Paige had one, Simi Cobbs had one, Ricky Jones had some long runs. So it certainly is contagious. Um, and again, you'd like to think the more success we have with those big plays, the more that's going to lead to some more big plays, some more explosion plays. Kevin, you're here. Um, the points that are left on the field, even though you guys are leading the Big Ten in scoring, leading in passing, doing well, obviously, in, in running, I mean, how much better can this offense get? We can be a lot better. And, and, and I could say we could be a lot cleaner. And I, I think that we are scoring points. But man, you know, we come in on Sunday mornings as coaches and watch the film and, and we're excited and happy that we won the game. But at the same time, we're like, boy, we're leaving plays out there that maybe just m uh, a missed base fundamental or a missed small coaching point where we can coach our kids better. Uh, to, want, to me, it's very encouraging. I, you know, after that game Saturday, we were very happy that we won. But you know, I looked at Nate and some of the receivers, I'm like, man, just, there's so many things we didn't even get to today. So many things that we've worked on that we didn't, we didn't show out here today on this field or plays we could have hit that we didn't. And to us, that, that leads to hunger. That leads to knowing that, man, we're doing great, but boy, we can be so much better. And that drive just to continue to get there, I think is gonna lead us as we go on into the season. You want to play some defenses, and not to reveal anything, but is there anything residual in terms of personnel or whatnot that Coach Moore can help be helpful with? Mm, I don't think so, not really. I mean, maybe a little, but I haven't talked to Coach Noor yet today. So I, he has his problems with this defending their offense. I have my problems trying to score points against a great defense. So we're kind of in our own little worlds.